Welcome to Money Mondays. Hello world. Welcome to Mind Over Money Mondays. I hope you are hearing me and seeing me again. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. We are really excited to be here again with you this Monday. And I've got my friend Jennifer Carter here. And we're going to have a wonderful conversation about what, you, what to teach your children about money. And last week, we were so thankful for the engagement that we got. You guys really wrote in and called in about that conversation. Um, should a single woman help her, <laughs> help her guy out with his finances? Should I help him with his credit? <laughs> we thank you so much for your feedback, and we encourage you to uh, continue to do that. But as I said today, my friend Jennifer Carter is here, and we are going to talk about money lessons for children. And I will post the five money lessons for my unborn children on my website, livelikeamillionairenow.wordpress.com, sometimes this week. Anywho, I, um, I also wrote a blog, blog called 10 Commandments of Financial Success. And my number one tip for wealth building is to marry the right person. And my friend sitting here has been married for... 23. 23 years and I am very impressed with people who know how to maintain a happy marriage for that length of time so I thought I'd bring in an expert today to help us understand how to stay together in a marriage why that is important and how does that help when you're teaching your children about money so welcome to the show guys Jennifer Brown Carter hello <laughs> hello everybody so have to move the camera I think a little bit yeah so we are and you know what guys we are teachers we are teachers <laughs> not tech people we are not tech people and we are just trying to figure this whole thing out and i hope indeed it is recording on facebook because i do not see any numbers moving but anywho guys thank you so much for joining us jennifer i'm so glad you're here and i remember guys you know i always talk about finances and money i kind of put health and wealth together because i think the two go hand in hand and strangely enough jennifer and i met at an event I would probably say at least what 15 years ago maybe yeah Ian was little Ian was exactly he was like physically little little tiny <laughs> yeah and now he's about <laughs> he's like almost six eight six eight and it seems like he grew up you know he went from five nine to six eight overnight <laughs> really guys really so she is here with me today and we're just going to talk about family life and family dynamics and how that impacts our wealth. So again, welcome Jennifer to the show. And Thank how you. are you? And I'm good. Good, good. So you have done well, my friend. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. You, you married your high school sweetheart. Mm -hmm. You all have had children together and you've built a great life. You're happily married. Happily married. And so I want to just talk about the impact of that today because my number one rule actually for financial success mm -hmm. is to marry the right person right and then you have children and then you teach them the right way right. so just talk to me a little bit about your experience with this subject matter mm -hmm. and what you would share with mm -hmm. our readers at home what advice or just some information and things mm -hmm. that you've learned along the way mm -hmm. that will help us well I think the biggest thing is that I listen to my dad mm -hmm. and my mom a lot and my dad always said, a family is a small business. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. have to, I think sometimes we go in it thinking that it's going to be like a Hollywood movie rather than like a small business. Mm -hmm. Anytime you have a business, you have to make decisions about the health and wealth of that small business. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the first thing we did when we went in. Um, when I got married to my husband, we had a lot of debt. Mm -hmm. We lived in... Um, a small apartment in Philadelphia. I don't even think you know this. No, I don't. In a small apartment in Philadelphia, our neighbor stabbed her son to death. Oh my God. We had transsexual <laughs> prostitutes helping us bring our groceries in. Oh and Ian, because he was in a carrier and <laughs> we all, all right. toddled in. Okay, it. so forget this myth of that, oh, we were just born into, born no, into all of this and no. it just came naturally and no, easily for no, us. No, we worked our butts off, you know? And we we had friends who would say things like why do you guys live there or why don't you buy a new car but mm -hmm. in the background we had many discussions and our discussions believe it or not were mm -hmm. always what's going to be best for ian mm -hmm. what's going to be best for this little person 
Yes. And that was the way, first, what does God want? The second was, what's going to be best for him? Mm -hmm. And that is how, that was our strategy. Yes. You know, um, I think a lot of times when you have a business or when you are making mm -hmm. financial decisions, you don't really have a, a screening or a vetting process. Yes. And that was what we did. Mm -hmm. We vetted every decision we made. So we mm -hmm. stayed in that terrible apartment mm -hmm. and until we had to say goodbye to our transsexual prostitute neighbors. Right. Because we bought a house. Yes. And so we, I want to clarify something she said that I thought was very important, guys. And um, it sounded like you said to me, you had to have like a focus. You had to have that one thing mm -hmm. that would keep you all together mm -hmm. as a family that would all that everyone could mm -hmm. agree on. Mm -hmm. And that would be sort of like the driving force behind every decision that you would make. And the, so, the thing that we mm -hmm. focused on was that central question. Yes. What does God want and mm -hmm. what's going to be best for this kid? Yes. Or if you have multiple kids, what's going to be best for your multiple kids? Mm -hmm. Because we go into it, I want my career. I want our house. I want... And mm -hmm. whenever you take that approach... You're not thinking about the end game. Mm -hmm. The end game has to be, if you want generational wealth, it can't be you. It has to be the generation. Right. So if you're asking, what do I want to do in my career? That's not helpful because it should be, how will this point in my career benefit this child, these yes. children? Mm -hmm. Because again, if you're building generations, you don't start with you, you start with the future part. Yes. And what is it that you wanted your generations to know, your sons, because you also have Ian right. and then you have Ron. 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 What is it that you wanted them to know? Well, first off, I work for it and it's not guaranteed for you. <laughs> so don't take that. That's the headline. <laughs> okay, so get ready to work, folks. Okay. <laughs> It's not going to be given to you, right? No. <laughs> okay. You know, and I'm very clear with them. You know, Dad and I are working our butts off. Yes. Y'all are loafers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're being vetted to say what's going to be good for my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Because if I can't trust you to make good decisions, I'm not leaving my money to you. Mm -hmm. I will set up a, a trust fund. I will set up something for my grandchildren. Because, yes. again, if I'm forward looking, mm -hmm. I love my baby. Yes. I love my boys, mm -hmm. but if y'all gonna mess my money up, right. guess what? You ain't getting none. There you go. There you go. So you have to be forward looking, mm -hmm. and you've got to, and the children have to be willing to work. Yes. What are there any like? Um, and those are absolutely great things that they need to do, but is do they have sort of like a mantra or something that they kind of live by? in terms of, okay, I know now that I need to have a strategy. I need to put mm -hmm. a plan in place because mm -hmm. mama has already made it very clear. If, I'm, <laughs> if we don't if work slipping, hard, and if we're, if we're slipping and tripping, you're going to slide out the gonna, wheel. <laughs> you're going to slide right on right out. out. <laughs> okay, so what do those boys do to stay in that wheel? What do they do every day? What do work hard. Mm -hmm. and, and I, you know, I think especially people our age, yeah. we feel like, oh, I didn't grow up with this, mm -hmm. I didn't grow up with that, I want my kids to have X, Y, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I have to work, you have to work. Mm -hmm. And you guys are coming in on chapter 23 of mom and dad's marriage. Yes. You got to do the same things we did in chapter one mm -hmm. to get to chapter 23, Yes. right? right. So what I teach them is y'all are working on your chapter one. Mm -hmm. How are you going to prepare for your chapter 23? Yes. Because we've lived our life. You have to live your life. Mm -hmm. And it's about merging what I have with what you've built. Yes. And that's how you compound, right? right. So if I work this hard and then I just give it to you and you squander it, mm -hmm. you're, and that's, then think about it. A building is a foundation with stuff on top of it. Mm -hmm. So. If what's the stuff on top? You've got the foundation of a good house, a good parents, yes. you know, a strong faith. What are you putting on top of that? And that's really the question right. you have to ask yourself so. when you're looking at your children. What are you fostering in them mm -hmm. that they're building on something? They're building too. They are. They are indeed. And it's so funny because we were talking to her son before <laughs> we started this broadcast today to get him to help us figure out all of these <laughs> The tools, technical part. this technical part. And I asked him, I say, Ian, what is the biggest lesson that you've learned from your mother and your father? And you want to tell us what he said? He said, 
we always have a rule mm -hmm. that you have to put aside half of what you earn. Mm -hmm. And I said, once you get a job and you have rent and things, you know, student loans or whatever it is you have, you mm -hmm. know, then you can put away less. But if you start with 50 and that's your goal, then that's a pretty high goal. Mm -hmm. You know, that to yes. start with 50% is a pretty high goal. Mm -hmm. So how many of us say 50% of what we it's earn? It's not easy to do. That's and even it. if you come mm -hmm. up short and you cut, you get halfway there, you're still saving 25%. Mm -hmm. How many of us say 25% of what we earn? Exactly. So if we start with that goal, and he was, when he was little, he would get birthday money. He would be able to spend half any way he wanted. No mm -hmm. restrictions, no yes. matter how stupid. He bought one of those dancing worms at the mall, <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh my, God, my goodness. That's a terrible... But right. it was his half. The other half was secure in the bank. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. so you can be frivolous with that. And that has been ingrained in him. You know, I have this money to be frivolous with, you know, pay my bills yes. and be responsible. But then I have this other half that is, that's the thing I'm building. Living. Great, great. That is wonderful advice, guys, because that is information that I have also um, lived by. I mm -hmm. do not believe at living at my means. Mm -hmm. And even though I don't have children, when I was building wealth and growing, I did exactly what you said. I lived 50% below my means. And that meant that I made X number of income. I made sure that all of my living expenses and um, you know car expenses were, in, were within that 50% range so that I could put something aside and save for the next big thing in my life, the next big vision in my life. So I just wanted to have someone come on who's married, and who has a family to talk to us about these things. And one last thing that we're gonna wrap it up, and you talked about this on Facebook, mm -hmm. and we are in the midst of pandemic and protests and things of this nature. And in reference to the protests, you mentioned something about community development mm. and financially speaking. And I just really want you to touch on that if you would. Do you remember <laughs> yeah. that post? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna close with this, guys because I thought that was really, really relevant and quite powerful. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's hear from Ms. Carter <laughs> one more time and then we're gonna wrap it up. <laughs> well, what I said was, you know, if you own it, you don't have to burn it down. Exactly. If you, don't, if you own it, you don't have to ask people mm -hmm. to treat you right. Yeah. So we, I, you know, protesting is great. Mm -hmm. Getting people out there is great. Mm -hmm. Supporting each other and owning your own business and owning your own home. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a business owner. Mm -hmm. You just have to own the building where someone's going to put their business. Exactly. Because you may have no skill whatsoever at business, mm -hmm. but everybody knows how to pay a mortgage. Everybody knows how to pay utilities because we all pay rent. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you are in ownership in that black neighborhood, you don't have to protest and burn it down because yes. it's yours. Right. You can hire the people you want. You can put the businesses you want. That's what I do in my business. Mm -hmm. Almost everyone that works at my business is female. Yeah. And almost everyone comes from a, an economically challenged background. Yes. Including me. Including <laughs> me. None of us grew up with a silver no. spoon in our mouths. And I just want to share one thing on to just add to that. I remember going to a town hall meeting and I was listening to people talk about gentrification mm -hmm. and I'm hearing people talk about the fact that the rents are going up and the rents are getting higher. And I'm here in the room with politicians and leaders saying things like, you know, wanting to force the landlord to lower the rent. And I get it, guys. I mean, I'm a landlord myself and mm -hmm. I keep my rents affordable. But at some point, the landlord also has to you know, has a mortgage to pay as well. And so I was thinking that the information going forward was not really that helpful. You can't really force someone to, you know, make life comfortable yeah. for you. Right. You, it goes back to what you were saying right. earlier. You know, you work hard You are, and you're strategic about it. And this is what I heard you were saying, that you've been teaching Ian from day one to be strategic with money, mm -hmm. to be efficient with money, and to have a plan. Right. And I think that that's what we all need, regardless of where we are in our life. And I know we're all at different stages in our career, but Ownership is so important, and that is why I'm starting the real estate classes coming up, because people have asked me, say, teach me how to do what you do. And I think that that is the key. 
if you want to be um, financially successful and savvy and not have some worries, we're really going to have to start talking about ownership and owning a business in the community, owning your own homes. Owning That's property. Owning property, guys. Well, one thing I do want to say mm -hmm. is that none of this is easy. Oh. Remember, I started out by describing where I live. Mm -hmm. My mom and dad, <laughs> every time we would come, they would worry for us because yeah. it was dangerous and it was terrible and all of that. Mm -hmm. And even now, making those decisions is not easy. Yes. Sticking to it is not easy, mm -hmm. you know? Right. All of it is hard. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we see the lifestyle without seeing the sacrifice. The sacrifice. And, and the it work. is not easy. Every mm -hmm. day, I get up every day at 4.45 mm -hmm. so I have enough time to do all the things I need to do to get things in place. Absolutely. And it is so funny because before the live stream, we were talking today just about that. And I was saying to Jennifer, she was telling me uh, how things are going with the school. And I said the same thing. I am technically on summer vacation right now, mm -hmm. but I've been working harder and longer just trying to get things together financially on right. on my personal projects. Right. My financial business projects that I am in charge right. of and it's challenging even now it's challenging and we are making a profit we are prospering but it's it's still hard work it's still a lot of labor involved guys so I don't know I just felt the need to share this information today because I really want to encourage people I know that we're living in pandemic we're living in protests but I also think that this is a great opportunity Huge opportunity. huge opportunity to think about, okay, make, put a strategic plan together. You heard Jennifer saying she's been teaching her son since they were little boys how to be financially secure and to have a plan and a strategy. The young man just graduated from Dartmouth. This, this is amazing, guys, and I just want all of us to experience financial success and I've been on a long time so I'm gonna wrap it up here and let you know that financial success is not a gift guys it is a habit and we will see you next Monday at the same time thank you